Liberty Nation with Tim Donner. Well, like the Grim Reaper or a football team trying to push the impeachment ball into the end zone after about a 100-play drive that began the morning after the 2016 election, Democrats have just about completed their mission to impeach President Trump after the House Judiciary Committee brought forward two articles of impeachment for abuse of power and obstruction of Congress that will likely be voted on this coming week. This after a month of hearings about that Trump phone call with the president of Ukraine featuring lifelong diplomats, political hacks wearing military uniforms, deep state functionaries, and left-wing, likely neo-Marxist law professors who didn't even attempt to hide their personal disdain for the president. And let me tell you, watching all of this made you wish you were at, say, the dentist, getting your teeth drilled instead. But LibertyNation.com's hero on impeachment is our political correspondent, Graham Noble, who persevered through the whole damn thing and lives to tell about it. So, Graham, my introductory question to you is, how's your mental health after sitting through all of these hearings? <laughs> well, Tim, I know it's to talk to you. Uh, well, I guess all I could say, the uh, best way for me to put it would be that I picked the wrong year to quit drinking. <laughs> of course, if you followed uh, what you just said, Graham, from the movie Airplane... You would also quote the line, I guess I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. But be that as it may, these two articles of impeachment sound quite vague. Now, why did the Democrats drop the bribery and quid pro quo that they were screaming about the last couple of weeks? And why did they decide uh, not to bring back the old obstruction charges from the Mueller report, which several of them were talking about in the last week? Well, um, I think, you know, Tim, after, after all of the hearings and despite all the media hype, uh, Democrats never actually established facts to support the charge of bribery, which, of course, actually replaced uh, quid pro quo in their narrative after they focus grouped it, I believe. And that's what and that's why they opted for something more nebulous, because they have no hard evidence of anything criminal. And, well, now uh, that, that just adds weight to the basic argument that's been made all along, which is at its base completely true that impeachment offenses are anything that the House of Representatives says they are. Uh, indeed, yeah. And I'll just throw in the fact that, of course, one of the articles of impeachment that they're, they're looking at uh, marking up is uh, obstruction of Congress which is interesting to note they haven't said obstruction of justice. I almost think, ironically and unwittingly, they are acknowledging the fact that what Congress is doing has got nothing to do with justice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was their intention, but that was a good pickup, Graham. Um, are these articles designed to limit the damage to those 31 Democrats who won in Trump districts in 2018, even to the point where Nancy Pelosi will allow some of them to vote against impeachment in order to save their seats. I mean, she could lose up to 15 votes from her own caucus and still impeach by a margin of one vote. Uh, yes, you know, and everyone always says that Nancy, there's no greater uh, counter of votes in Congress than Nancy Pelosi, and, and that may be a true statement. Um I, I'm sure they factored that in, but the question is, uh, you know, these Democrats in these in these districts that went for Trump in 2016 are still kind of between a rock and a hard place, because whichever way they vote, they're gonna they're gonna lose some support and maybe gain support from others. Once yeah. it gets to a trial in the Senate, let's talk a little bit about that. Would Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader? be wiser to opt for a quick trial leading to Trump's inevitable exoneration or to take advantage of this admittedly unique opportunity, the impeachment and the IG report at the same time, to conduct a lengthy inquisition on Democratic wrongdoing going all the way back to spying on the Trump campaign. I think for the for the for the more uh, let's say for the, for the more extremely partisan 
uh, Republicans and indeed Trump supporters around the country, uh, you might think that maybe just dragging this out for as long as they can and make it making it as 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 kind of dirty and uh, you know as they possibly can is really going to just like be incredibly damaging for the Democrats. However, the way I look at it is, and I think this is how Mitch McConnell and a lot of the Democrats in the Senate are going to look at it, is that actually getting through this trial uh, phase very quickly and, and very quickly acquitting the president kind of sends the message that the entire case against the president was actually weak and simply unworthy of further consideration. It seems to me what you're saying is true, though. We have to stipulate that the that the White House is very anxious to make this into a lengthy inquisition. So there's going to be there's going to have to be some negotiating between the White House and the Senate leadership in order to figure out maybe some kind of compromise strategy on the length of trial. Now, let's, before I let you go, let's take a look at how, as you see it, this impeachment seen together with the IG report, which is a disaster uh, for the Democrats, how this is, what effect this is likely to have on the Democrats' presidential primary because, oh yes, they're in the midst of a presidential race, aren't they? Lest we forget. Yeah, right. Um, you know, I'm not sure, Tim, that it's going to have a, a huge amount, either the IG report or the or the whole impeachment thing. And and of course, there, when it comes to the IG report, which, by the way, I think was a lot more damning than a lot of the media are making it out to be. Indeed. Uh, but anyway, uh, that aside, I think I think you know all these Democrats who are running for their party's nomination, they're all in the same boat, really. When it, you know, vis a vis the vis a vis the uh, the IG report and indeed the impeachment of Trump or the attempted impeachment of Trump. So I, I I'm not sure how either of those things is going to play too heavily into the primary. Now, when it comes, of course, to the 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 elect the presidential election campaign with the eventual Democratic nominee, whoever they are. Uh, that's going to be a whole different ball game. Then, then I think the both of these things, the impeachment and the IG report, are going to become really big deals. All right, Graham. Well, thanks for catching us up, and thanks especially from all the staff at LibertyNation.com for lifting the burden of having to watch every single moment of these almost seemingly endless hearings. Great job covering this impeachment charade. I mean, theater, I mean, proceedings. That's right, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. Okay, Tim, thanks a lot. Graham Noble, Chief Political Correspondent for LibertyNation.com.